Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this new uh, webinar from the Clean Bus Europe Platform Project. Today, we will be focusing on battery trolley bus technology and emotion charging. And for this, we have uh, our speaker today. Uh, most of you already know him. We have the pleasure to welcome today Mateusz Wigasiewski. He's uh, the Electric Mobility Development and Market Intelligence Director at Solaris. He will be guiding us today through this hour webinar. You can go to the next slide. Um, yes, a short uh, introduction uh, on, on Mateus, though, as I said, uh, you, you all know him. Uh, Mateus is graduated uh, in economics uh, at the University of Poznan and has also uh, a chartered, uh, also uh, at the University of Poznan and London Chartered Institute of Marketing. He has more than 20 years experience working in public transportation in the automotive industry, and he is uh, the director of the e-mobility development of market intelligence at Solaris Bass and Coach. But focus of, uh, of his role is, uh, is also to be able to provide uh, cities, operators, authorities with uh, support when it comes to understand how to transition to specific uh, technologies. The agenda today is, as you can see in the slide, we will have first an introduction, what is the technology, uh, also considering emotion charging, we will have a look at the vehicles and components, the charging infrastructure, and we have some uh, some discussion also on the advantages and, and drawbacks, and of course a look to the city strategies uh, that uh, can be uh, suitable to deploy this technology. As usual, at the end we will have questions and answers. We uh, are very happy to, as I said before, to have discussion with you. So please uh, don't be shy. Uh, you can share your squ your questions in the chat. Also, you can share your qu your questions by raising your hand. Normally we do this at the end so that uh, we have covered the presentation. But of course, if there is something that you don't understand in a specific slide, feel free to let us know through the chat and we will address the question on the spot. Um, as usually, uh, today's goal is uh, yeah, to, provide, to provide you with, uh, with a good overview on this technology. Uh, you know, we have already run other webinars on uh, battery uh, electric technology as well, and we will be uh, also considering a specific aspects for battery technology today. Um, obviously, we would like to be able to provide you with the most important points when it comes to considerations uh, uh, for the implementation and deployment of this technology, um, some insights on safety aspects and information sources you can refer to to continue learning on this um, on this technology. You might remember we do have on the project website we do have a library where you can find uh, different uh, resources. We have reports, we have also interactive tools, and uh, there uh, you will be able also to find uh, the recording of, of this webinar afterwards, as well as the slides. Um, as normal, uh, because we are all already quite used to this uh, kind of online webinars, of course, and, and discussions, uh, just a brief mention to, to the etiquette for discussion. Um, please mute yourself per default. It could be if someone forgets that I will do this myself. Obviously, you will be able to open your mic whenever you need to raise a question. And as we said, uh, questions are welcome in the chat or uh, in person by raising your hand. Uh, again, for the ones already uh, joining in the last uh, minute, um, the session is, is recorded already, uh, it's being recorded, so um, just uh, be aware of this in case you wouldn't like to be recorded on camera. And uh, again, please don't be shy, uh, just share your questions, your thoughts, we are keen on discussions with you. And without further delay, I would like to, share, uh, yeah, to give the floor to Matthews and uh, we kick it out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aida, for this uh, very nice introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be speaker today at this webinar focusing on the in-motion charging and battery trolley buses. Since I know the uh, list of participants, I'm pretty sure that amongst you, the much better expert than myself on in-motion uh, in motion technology and the trolley buses, because I know that we have uh, here representatives of many cities already using this type of of trolley buses with batteries and in motion charging systems. Nevertheless, I will try to, to share with you and say technical possibilities existing today on the market in terms of the uh, battery trolley buses in charging uh, in motion uh, technology. 
since there is no clear, I would say, standards on the market and no one solution available, I, th I hope that it will be uh, it's understood by uh, by all of uh, all of you that I will, of course, focus on the uh, solutions presented by our company. Nevertheless, I will not try to focus much on the Solaris brand, but as in, on the technology uh, as such. Uh, any questions more than welcome see, um, because I'm presenting here and, and I can see on my screen most of my slides. Uh, please help me if somebody will raise the hand or, or uh, have some question in the chat. Please interrupt me and go ahead with the, with the question. OK, so we'll start from the point that I, I strongly believe that amongst uh, participants of this webinar, there are no doubts about the future of public transportation, that it must be really sustainable and sustainable means based on the low and zero emission solutions. By such as a company, we, we, uh, we treat any type of let's say low and zero emissions, and not only trolley buses, but also battery buses, hydrogen buses, and of course trolley buses with batteries. Uh, just very uh, basic information about the company I'm representing. Solaris has been established on the market in 1996, so 26 years ago. Since a few years, we are a member of uh, CAF Group, which is well known from the Rolling Stoke uh, part of the of the transportation industry but and Solaris is a business unit of its group. All of our production facilities are located in uh, in Poland, but our products are available in over 32 countries today. And what is I think very significant uh, and uh, for the entire market, but also for this meeting is that nowadays more and more uh, produced by our company and other manufacturers vehicles are zero and low emission. Uh, basing on the example of our company, last year over 41% of our overall production mix was based on the low and zero emission uh, vehicles, including uh, trolley buses. And this trend definitely will grow this and next uh, years. And very important role in this new zero emission uh, vehicle mix uh, will take the trolley buses, especially trolley buses with batteries and in motion charging systems. Uh, but of course, there are other technologies existing on the market. Okay, so what's our ex general experience talking about uh, trolley buses? So so far, we have delivered over 1,800 uh, trolley buses to 18 uh, countries uh, in Europe. Mm, we are offering in general three lengths of trolley buses, starting from 12 meter standard option, 80 meter articulated, and B articulated 24 meter uh, trolley buses. We have uh, three main. Uh, partners in terms of the propulsion systems. It's called Electric, Medcon and Kipe. Uh, and you can meet our trolley buses in 60 cities uh, as of today. And I would say that thanks to the battery technology and in motion charging technology, today trolley buses are a great alternative for those cities and those operators who already have existing uh, trolley bus fleet and without uh, necessity to extend the overhead wires in the cities, we can you can extend your operation by the zero emission vehicles, which definitely are trolley buses. By the way, in our his, in our uh, company, the history of trolley buses is the I would say longest one uh, in the area of e mobility because the very first trolley bus we present in the year two thousand and one, so over twenty uh, years ago. Uh, where you can meet our buses, you can see on this uh, trolley buses. You can see on this uh, map. I know that in this room we have representatives of few of these. Uh, cities when you can see on the on the list and I would say the recently uh, vast majority over 90 percent of of our trolley buses are equipped with battery systems and in motion charging systems so this is definitely a trend where entire industry is going okay and going to be to to more specific information about technology so in offer with the in motion charging systems that are available 12 meter uh, low floor trolley buses, 18 meter and 24 B articulated trolley buses. Uh, technical specs of each of this uh, vehicle you can see here. So uh, for 12 meter trolley bus, we are talking about uh, 19 tons uh, gross vehicle weight. The maximum speed is 70. Mm, I would say we never met on the market uh, a requirement higher than this this speed. By the way, the average commercial speed of the trolley buses in Europe it's circulating between 17 to 20 kilometers per per hour. So very rarely this maximum limit is is used by the operators. Uh, of course, all vehicles are equipped with the air conditioning and and, and heating, which are provided uh, of course from electricity. 
and batteries are an option, but as I already mentioned, usually this option is used by majority of, of uh, operators. Uh, the same about 80 meter trolley buses, they are up to 30 ton gross uh, vehicle uh, weight and 24 B articulated vehicle. Uh, it's, I would say, not allowed officially in every European country to, to drive such a vehicle in the real traffic, but they need a special say, exemption to the uh, to the room uh, to the rules uh, but uh, there are many operators in Europe who are looking to this uh, ultra high capacity uh, b articulated vehicles okay so uh, all of our trolley buses we always bid in the cooperation with some external partner at the moment we can offer three different systems all of them has let's say special uh, Features, I would say, I don't want to say advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> I would rather, I would say, that I have a specific solutions. The the standard option in our trolley buses is one of the one offered by Medcom, is a Polish-based company, Skoda uh, from Czech or Kipa uh, Electric. Uh, on the pictures, you can see some examples and below some examples of these uh, deliveries. The I would say the final specs of the trolley bus is always depends on the specification of the tendering book or the expectations of the of the of the end user uh, it's related not only to the propulsion system and its features or battery capacity or battery type but is also related to very specific um, solutions in the area of a passenger compartment or driver's uh, compartment okay so let's uh, let's go to the to the very technical uh, solutions offer uh, in trolley buses with in-motion charging system. So as I already mentioned, the 12 meter buses, uh, the standard solution is provided by Medcom. You can see here the layout of all of the components, including most I would say, important crucial components like a, a traction container, traction batteries, which you can see in the place where normally you have so-called engine tower. There is also located onboard traction uh, battery charger. This is a very important element of in-motion charging uh, system used in trolley buses. I will explain it later. And of course, all the uh, components like electric motor <coughs> for all our trolley buses, 18, tw uh, 12, 18 and 24 meter, we use electric central motor. Uh, I will explain uh, on one of the later slides uh, specs of this of this electric traction uh, motor. About 80 meter trolley buses with Medcom, the, the layout of the components is as follow. I would say there is no much difference apart from the distributing all of the components on the roof into the first car, first section and second uh, section of this uh, vehicle. That's how it look like the uh, layout of the uh, solution provided by Skoda. Here, just one remark, I would say that solution provided by Skoda, its entire system, um, including uh, driveline, electric motor and batteries, it's pro are provided by Skoda. Talking about the Metcom, there is a, uh, apart from drive uh, unit, there is a, the, the traction batteries are provided by Solaris and our uh, suppliers. And this is about 18 meter trolley buses. As you can see, of course, uh, there is a space for the uh, air conditioning, must be the space for air conditioning uh, components. And this is last but not least uh, the solution uh, provided by Kipa for 12 meter trolley buses. And uh, for 18 meter trolley buses, as you can see, here are two uh, axles drive uh, available. Such a solution was delivered to many cities, including, for example, Milan. Uh, cities in, in Germany, Zollingen, uh, Esslingen and Eberswalde, which are using this trolley bus with the Kipa system, so that we have their two truck electric traction motors. And talk, talking specifically about these electric motors, these are the options available. So all of these engines are um, air-cooled, uh, and the output power starts from 160 kilowatts, uh, which is, I would say, standard for 12-meter buses. Uh, to 240 or 251 kilowatts for 18 meter uh, vehicles. You have you can see small differences between these uh, solutions, uh, but in principle the main features are pretty uh, the same. 
Of course, uh, there are some differences in the torque. So these are, let's say, elements sometimes considered by the end users in terms of the power needed, for example, in the hilly area in the city or passenger flows on the specific lines. OK, and now I will go uh, to the, let's say, main uh, subject of today's meeting which is in motion charging technology. What does it mean? In motion charging is, I would say, self-explanatory. So we are talking about the trolley buses. Uh, which are equipped with the battery, so or energy storage. Of course, the other option might be super capacitor, but we are using in our company batteries. These batteries might be of uh, capacity starting from 29.2 kilowatt hours, and we can multiply these packs up to three uh, packs in a tw both 12 and 80 meter vehicles. So in total, we can have energy storage for 87 kilowatt hours. I would say above that, it's also possible. But usually in practice, we haven't met yet, uh, based on our experience, these requirements to have a higher capacity because this capacity is directly linked to the uh, um, expected operations without a catenary system for trolley buses. So it depends how many kilometers we want to cover uh, with trolley bus on batteries, not on the overhead wires. That's, that's how we would say uh, preparing entire system to be ready not only on the day of delivery, which is also important, but usually in 10 or sometimes 15 years from the uh, 15 year later to cover this distance, because you need to take under consideration the life cycle of the batteries. Of course, for the batteries which we are using, this uh, life cycle is a very long one. It takes for 15,000 cycles, so usually it covers the entire uh, life cycle of the of the vehicle. But in some cases, it might uh, it might need, uh, I would say some replacement of the uh, of the battery and we always and very often in the tendering book the expectations for the uh, operation without the catenary is defined by the number of kilometers but in the certain uh, period of time so not only on day one of delivery but also in day 3600 so in 10 years from now bus the trolley the operator want to be sure that the trolley bus can still cover uh, the same distance on the batteries uh, even taking the consideration that, that with every cycle, uh, slowly, slowly the the initial capacity of the ba battery is increased, is decreasing. This is a normal, I would say, process related to the chemistry. But okay, how the entire all uh, system works? So imagine that we have the, the the most important elements here on this graph, and starting from the pantograph, so the two pole pantograph, which is collecting DC. Uh, DC energy, usually of voltage 600 volts or 700 volts. These are the most um, or most frequently used standards in different cities. We have entrance of the electricity on board and the first and the main component, which is on, on board of the vehicle, we have so-called high voltage power distribution box. So this is simply the, I would say, Maybe the, the the distribution center for or for electricity, which is deciding uh, or software of this of this uh, of this uh, tool of this device is de uh, deciding where the electricity will go and where will be the priority. And usually the priority number one is of course the mobility of the vehicle, so it's moving from one place to another. So for that we this electricity is sent to the inverter, which is converting this DC. Uh, electricity into AC and it's sent uh, to the traction motor. Uh, one or two traction motor, as I've already presented. So for 12 meter bus, it will be one traction motor. For 80 meter bus, we are talking about two traction motors. So this, I would say, the basic function of the entire system. But this electricity uh, can be, can also, sub needs to also supply the other very important component on the board of the vehicle, which is a static inverter. Static inverter. Uh, it's a it's device which is say producing electricity continuously for uh, 24 volts for the low voltage installation for for example I know informational system displays ticketing system and other low voltage components as well as a let's say high voltage or three phase components like for example compressor for the air conditioning or compressor for suspension so we need that 400 volts this static inverter is isolated for the from the from the from the grid, uh, so from that perspective, it is also very um, very important for the safety of entire vehicle. Uh, and talking, of course, about the safety, 
the main uh, difference between battery bus and trolley bus in terms of isolation is that all of the trolley buses, according to the norms uh, delivered to the European market, must follow the rules, uh, ISO norms, which is defining the double insulation for trolley buses. This double insulation, of course, means that all of the high voltage components having connection to the to the overhead wires must be isolated from the rest of the vehicle to avoid the situation in in which we can have let's say this high voltage on the on the construction of the vehicle uh, one of the so we have we are using special isolators underneath the the high voltage components uh, all resistance of the vehicle is measured continuously uh, in the high voltage box and uh, on the on the body of the vehicle we are using if there is any let's say so called different of electric potentials and addition additional uh, elements of this safety system are two belts underneath the vehicle which are let's say grounded to the to the ground so uh, thanks and and this uh, resistance or uh, the potential of the vehicle is monitored and in the traction container and additionally the driver can see the special on the display this special uh, signal in case if something is not according to the procedure or we have a higher voltage than a load if i'm not mistaken it's above 60 volts so uh, you may hear that in the history of trolley buses uh, many many years ago might have the uh, places some accidents when we have so-called i know know exactly the english term for that but when you step out or step into the to the trolley bus you can uh, that the potential situation where there's electric potential be difference in the po electric potential between the vehicle and the ground uh, but to avoid that we have this double insulation and we have this grounding and special safety rules for example one of them according to the regulation 107 which is talking about, which is about this difference of electric potential uh, not more than 60 volt is uh, apart from double insulation of the entire installation is also is also the safety zone in the area of doors and handrails so for example all of the entrance area in the vehicle each each, each entrance so usually it's three entrance in the 12 meter bus up to four entrances uh, in the 80 meter buses all of these elements which can be touched by the passenger are isolated physically or using materials which are isolating that from the rest of the of the body vehicle so even if any I would say damage in the installation might happen there is no difference in the uh, electric potential between the grounding uh, and passenger and the vehicle to avoid any any uh, any I would say uh, accidents which we don't want to have on the uh, using trolley buses but going back to this going back to the let's say uh, system of in motion charging so as I already mentioned the main function of the system is to propel the vehicle but the other function of this electricity collected from the pantograph uh, is to collect an energy for traction batteries to have possibility to operate without the overhead uh, wires so this electricity goes through the charger this is a special onboard charger and how it looks like this device and how it works i will explain on the next slides and this charger is charging traction batteries uh, traction batteries, as I already mentioned, we can offer from one to three packs, so it's from 30 up to almost 90 kilowatt hours. And this electricity is used in the situation. So we are talking, this is this element which we call in motion charging. So whenever trolley bus is connected to the overhead wires and it's moving in the city or even standing still, we can use this electricity to charge the traction batteries. All of this, all of the, this process is made automatically i would say without without uh, uh, engaging driver uh, it's automatically and usually it's stirred this way that system is tried to avoid for the uh, due to the battery life cycle and to the, the best performance of, of the batteries usually this system is operating i would say or charging and discharging of, of the batteries between 20 to 80 or 20 90 percent of the overall capacity of the battery of the battery uh, packs so it's made automatically and usually whenever there is a possibility to charge a battery and there is enough power to propel the vehicle system is also at the same time charging batteries and in case we want to travel with the vehicle uh, without the overhead wires disconnecting that these two pole pantographs 
we are using electricity stored in the traction batteries. So then the battery energy flows goes in the let's say opposite direction. So the traction batteries are sending uh, voltage electricity using this so-called bypass. So not through the charge the bypass to the to the high voltage power distribution box, and again through the inverter to the traction motors. Of course, we still need this electricity for the static inverter to supply all of the auxiliarities on the on the on the board. And last but not least, I would say general situation which might happen uh, in terms of energy flow in the trolley buses is so-called recuperation. So capturing uh, kinematic energy which is uh, generated through the through the braking process. So whenever trolley bus is braking, this kinematic energy is um, is propelling the traction motor, which in this case is converted from the traction motor. It's, it became a generator of electricity, and this electricity again can be captured for the traction batteries, but usually it's given back to the uh, to the overhead catenary, and it can be captured for the for the catenary for the, the for the grid for the wires, and usually is used by the next uh, the closest vehicles in front of us or or uh, behind us in the in the real uh, traffic and last but not least there we have a braking resistor but is it this uh, device i would say is used very not very often the trolley buses so this is in the um, in the moment when we have really i would say overproduction of the of the electricity in the entire vehicle so we have for example full batteries uh, we don't need that much power for driving or we are rec uh, recuperating, but the, the, the number of kilowatts produced from recuperation is higher than possible to, to, to receive by the, by the batteries or the system. So in that cases, we're using this braking re resistor, which is simply converting this electricity into the heat. In some, uh, in some cases, we can use this heat for reheating the interior of the vehicle. But I, I said this this happened very rarely. So uh, once again, I would like to present you where is located this onboard uh, traction. Where are located this onboard uh, the traction batteries? So in the in the uh, back section of the of the vehicle, and over over these two battery packs, you have this onboard traction battery charger. How it looks like this energy flow? This is a graphic used thanks to the Kipa uh, electric company. So it's more or less visualizing this energy flow, which goes through the through the overhead wires to the to the electric motors or to the to the uh, batteries. Uh, this is uh, a graphic presenting this onboard charger for the traction batteries. Uh, and uh, depends on the battery capacity and depends, I would say, on the needs of the operations. Uh, we have different output power mm, here uh, expressed in amperes, which is more frequently used by, I would say, electricians and in, in electrician engineers. But um, for, let's say, more commercial uh, um, presentation, we're using also kilowatts. So we have the uh, onboard chargers starting for 55 kilowatts up to 100 uh, kilowatts, which are 150 amps. The batteries itself, as I mentioned already, can have a capacity of 30 up to 90 kilowatt hours. Uh, so, depends on the, let's say, uh, on this battery pack's capacity, we need that much energy to charge them in full. Uh, and I would say that uh, abilities of batteries to collect energy are, is much more higher than the, the charger device. And the uh, uh, possibilities of entire network. What do I mean? That uh, the, the batteries which we are using for trolley buses are based on the lithium titanium technology, which has a very high density of power, not density of energy, but density of power. So these batteries can be very quickly charged, which is a very important feature in trolley buses because within the very short time we can charge them with even 4C. 4C is defining that the batteries are able to call to to receive energy four times larger than its capacity. So just give you example and sorry to be very explicit on that, but probably as I said, probably we have many experts on that in this in this room, but maybe for somebody will be new information that this battery, for example, of uh, capacity 30 kilowatt hours might collect maximum up to 120 kilowatts charging power. Uh, but usually in the trolley buses is not needed yeah, due to the fact that we need these trolley buses on the very certain 
uh, distance or we want to cover the certain distance. So as I said already, these batteries are usually using between 20 to 80 percent of its overall capacity. I'm not sure if there are any questions so far. Not. It doesn't look like uh, it, there is okay. questions. Okay, <laughs> so then I will co continue my presentation. Uh, so of course, uh, in the real traffic, we have a different, let's say, uh, situations, uh, which of course the, the guys from the software part can convert to the specific algorithm and, and they are pro, pro, probably quant, uh, quantable. Uh, you, can, you can calculate how many different situations you can have, but in general, Usually, bus is, trolley bus is running or it's standing still on the on the cross sections or, or due to some traffic uh, situation. So, usually, number one priority number one from this distribution box uh, is is attra is attraction of the of the vehicle. Uh, and sometimes it's happened that we, if we have a few trolley buses next to each other, we can have not enough power in the let's say in the overhead wires. So then uh, usually the system of the vehicle is deciding um, the priorities of onboard uh, components. So sometimes the, the battery charging priority is given or the heating system can be limited or even disabled. Uh, uh, and sometimes we can even let's say interrupt or suspend the uh, charging process in the in the vehicle. But in general, in motion charging can be done through the all the time uh, up to the uh, charging batteries to full uh, on any any at any moment of the uh, of the operating trolley buses uh, using the overhead uh, network. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, we can use up to three battery packs depends on the distance covered on the batteries. And what is very important from the operator and end user point of view is that our system is built that way that uh, it's possible having, for example, three battery packs, it's possible to operate even on one battery pack, switching off uh, the other two because we have a parallel um, connect connection of these batteries, which allows to operate vehicle uh, on one um, battery pack, even if two other have some failures. Yeah, so, so this is very important in case of any failures which might occur uh, uh, operating in the area of the city without the uh, overhead wires. At minimum, we can be sure that we can, for example, leave the cross section or leave the the vehicle to the to the safer uh, space. Uh, later, I can even I, I need to disconnect to another presentation because I have a separate picture. Uh, I can present at the end of this of this presentation how it looks like this battery pack with a special disconnector, which is also important for the safety. Uh, reason for the safety point of uh, of view. And let's not, uh, by, uh, but not least, I would like to mention uh, the very specific, I would say, project which we provide, which we deployed in Gdynia, city of Gdynia. By the way, I will present this use case uh, at the end of my presentation as the one of the uh, use cases for in motion charging uh, vehicles or trolley buses with batteries. So in this project was expected to deliver electric bus with some elements of the trolley bus. So I would say that this is an electric battery bus, but with some features, especially features of charging the, the batteries using the infrastructure for trolley buses. So you can see on this slide those elements which are typical for battery buses, so e-bus equipment, and these yellow uh, components which are specific for trolley buses only. This is a current collector, so-called pantograph, people pantograph and DC-DC uh, converter. Uh, so this battery bus can use electricity to charge the batteries from the from the external source, which is a trolley bus network, and can operate as a regular battery bus without uh, without this uh, network. Of course, for both this 2.0 trolley bus and also any standard trolley buses with batteries, upon request of the end user, we can also have their, the CCS combo 2 type connector for the plug-in charging if necessary. This is also uh, possible. Just the technical specs of this trolley bus 2.0 as we call it, but I would rather say that this is battery bus with the functions of the 
of the trolley buses and this type of six of those we delivered to Gdynia, uh, which was three years uh, ago. But this is not only solution to extend the operations uh, of the trolley buses without the without the network. So apart from batteries, uh, I would say there's, there is also existing another zero emission possibility to extend the range of the trolley buses. And this example of city of Riga, the capital city of uh, Latvia, the expectation was to have a trolley bus with batteries with the hydrogen fuel cell range extender because the expected range uh, without the overhead wires was up to 100, uh, 100 kilometers. And this is provided thanks to the batteries and additional fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell range extender, which is uh, producing electricity on board of vehicle. And this electricity is used to, to charge the, the batteries. I, as far as I know, this is the only of its kind vehicle on the world at the moment, but this is one of the uh, options combining, I would say, three technologies of battery buses, trolley buses and hydrogen buses. And last but not least, I would like to very briefly present you the um, use case of city of Gdynia. This is a city on north of Poland at the um, at the coast of the Baltic Sea. Uh, this operator is using uh, 100 vehicles in the fleet and trolley buses in the fleet. And these red elements of the network, you can see that are those provided by trolley buses with in motion charging system and, and batteries. So at the moment there are six lines. Uh, up to three and a half kilometer uh, long and this system is still under I would say it's still developing thanks to this technology and this is the graph from the one of the uh, articles about this uh, network trolleybus network which is presenting the growing um, the growing shares of the in motion charging trolley buses or trolleybus with batteries in the entire fleet. And last but not least, probably many of you might have some questions about the TCO and uh, economic aspect of this solution. I would say that this is, uh, especially nowadays, where we have a uh, mm, challenging times in the in the market of energy, or in, in general in the mm, yeah, in the market of energy on the on the uh, not only in Europe but in the entire world. This is a very specific, I would say, issue because. Even in, in the times of, of having no crisis on this market, uh, I would say that this must be calculated uh, in specific cases, in specific context of each city, because each city is different and the same well, like each operator needs a special technical solution, the same in each city there is a different uh, there are different factors which are defining very strongly the TCO of, of uh, battery trolley buses or in motion charging trolley buses versus standard ones or battery buses. So by the way, at Solaris, we are providing this so-called feasibility studies. So usually in uh, in the face of um, technical dialogue before the tendering um, procure, um, procurement process, we are able to present uh, let's say advantages and disadvantages of each of the solution. I mean, battery buses versus trolley buses or trolley buses with batteries, taking under consideration different factors, like starting from those technical ones, like the distance to be covered on batteries, uh, topography of the of the each city, like it's a flat terrain or it's a hilly one, climate uh, and temperatures, which has a significant impact on the on the batteries performance or might have the significant impact on the battery performance, but also this economic one like like uh, price of energy used in the specific city and or energy mix used by the by the end user. So I would say that this is very briefly about the in motion uh, in motion uh, charging technologies and battery trolley buses. So I will be more than happy to to answer your question or at least try to answer your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Matthias. It's uh, an extremely complete and extensive uh, look to the technology. I see there is one. Uh, yes, one question from Yusuf. Um, do you think these technologies will develop the same way in other regions in the world, like uh, the US, Asia and Latin America? Could we expect that we have uh, battery electric trolleys and uh, emotion charging in other regions outside Europe? 
well, uh, as, as you know, as, uh, as a company Solaris, we are focusing very strongly on the European market. So I'm not an expert on, let's say, uh, on the markets mentioned in the questions, but I do strongly believe that this technology may be uh, definitely, I would say, globalized or the, 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 the general idea behind the technology might work everywhere and might be the great advantage of the trolley buses over, let's say, charging buses because in especially in those cities where we have existing infrastructure uh, the main advantage is that we don't need to invest uh, usually a lot of that uh, in the infrastructure itself and but and, and without this investment we still can operate trolley buses or existing fleet of trade buses which might be equipped with the batteries so as on, on, the, on the example of dinya they extended significantly number of passengers carried out every year without extending, without investing into the uh, catenary, yeah, I would say system or infrastructure for trolley buses, you can still operate in uh, in the area where trolley buses were never seen before. And just to give you one example, part if I would say uh, a bit funny that uh, Gdynia is a part of so-called area which is called three cities. There is a Gdańsk, Sopot and Gdynia. There, they, they, they consist of an agglomeration called three cities. And in Gdańsk, it's very strongly, I would say, tram-oriented city with only internal combustion engine buses. And there was a huge surprise of the inhabitants of the city when one day trolley bus, just for a test, arrived to the very city center of Gdańsk, which is almost 50 kilometers away. And they were shocked that they have trolley buses. And it was possible thanks to the in-motion charging technology and batteries. But this, I would say, fun example is presenting that we can really extend operations and be more flexible for passengers, uh, for the transportation uh, system and network in the city using this technology. So I believe strongly, yes, it might be more popular in other areas uh, outside Europe. Thanks a lot. I, I also see um, further questions. Uh, continuation uh, and in terms of synergies with other electric transport modes like uh, e-buses or the tram indeed uh, that was also one question popping up in my mind we have also in uh, in the webinar we have uh, uh, Francesco from from Cagliari so where they are also uh, deploying both technologies battery trolley buses battery electric so how do you see how do you see it and please uh, colleagues please ju jump in the discussion uh, whenever you feel like so I was asked to answer this. Yeah, definitely there are the synergies between these different modes of transportation, and we are talking about the multimodal uh, transportation. So definitely in those cities where we have access to the, let's say, general saying grid, and we have already some electric vehicles, uh, usually the tramways historically are the oldest one, we can use um, to some extent this network. The best use case in that uh, area might be, again, sorry, sorry for this Polish example, but I know it very well, it's a Krakow, city of Krakow has a both trolley buses and battery buses, but it can also be used for trolley buses. And there is a there are, for example, the the joint charging solutions using the same uh, connection to the grid for trams, both trams and battery buses. So definite and or for example, the city of Barcelona to some extent is also using this this I would say catenary uh, for metro and battery buses. So definitely there are the synergies between technologies. Uh, not only in the area of, let's say, operations, but also in the area of, of, of infrastructure and technology. But yeah, I see that Francesco has some question. Yeah, please. Yes, uh, thank you. I have a question about uh, the trolley bus 2.0 you mentioned in your presentation. Um, is the EMC technology available for these buses or uh, you need to have the bus still to charge it? No, no, absolutely. The EMC technology is available for this bus. Uh, but uh, OK, this was specific requirement by of the city to have a, let's say, battery bus with some elements of trolley buses. Uh, but it's double did it, it vehicles has a so-called double insulation in the system. So for many people, it's not a battery bus, it's trolley bus by default, because everything what is double insulated according to the special ISO norms, usually it's or European regulations. 107, if I'm not mistaken, is treated as a trolley bus. But this specific one was officially registered as battery bus with some function of, 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 of um, I can remember that, that most of the components were the same like for battery buses, with the main difference that we have uh, this two-pole pantograph, uh, 
so the same buses can use for charging these uh, the same network like for trolley buses and usually they operate almost all time as the trolley buses but having let's say larger distances without the overhead catenary so this is i would say uh, the matter of discussion if they should be treated more like as a trolley bus or battery buses but this is the best example of the synergies between these two technologies i would say okay thank you i see it's just a borderline situation it's just a philosophical uh, approach to the theme okay absolutely thanks a lot francesco we have another question from slobodan um He's asking, do you calculate the size of the battery in relation uh, with the time on the grid, the load and the driving cycle for any city? Uh, the answer is very simple. Yes, we do. <laughs> so uh, we, of course, we are taking under consideration also these elements. Yeah, uh, as I said, there are many factors which we need to take under consideration talking about the bus battery capacity and one of them is, let's say, uh, number of kilometers uh, using the the grid what distance would then we need we want to cover without the without the connection yeah to the to the to the pantograph so it must be calculated this way that with in any conditions in any let's say traffic situation the driver must be sure that safely at least he can um, reach the the area which is i would say safe to leave the bus in case something happened but uh, but yeah, yeah, and also take under consideration this this uh, usage of the batteries in the during the uh, lifetime of the of the batteries. Yes, but we are calculating this as well. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Matthias. Uh, any other question, uh, reactions, uh, experience to share? There's a lot of uh, experts in in the room, so I would be happy to have uh, reactions from the room. Even if it's not a question. I think that we have more here convinced uh, representatives of those cities who are using already these systems than those I would say. Yeah, for, I, for whom this technology might be might be new. But there are a lot of use cases across Europe uh, with many of the cities. I believe they are the, the part of the clean bus uh, platform. So I think it's also uh, it would be also possible to present them in life, I would say in the real conditions. So uh, I will be more than happy to, to be contacted by those of you who might be interested more uh, deep in this technology. And, and together with the UITP, we can we can arrange such, a, let's say, study tours. Yeah, for, for you. Indeed, it's part, it's part of the project. Then, OK, if no one is jumping, I would have also a question. Um, we always hear that um, but the trolley buses uh, only make sense if you have already the the uh, yeah a, a, a trolley bus system, no? In terms of the cost, what it means to deploy the infrastructure, the the catenaries, etc. But there is discussion lately, and uh, in the Clean Bus Europe platform, we also cooperate with with the trolley trolley bus 2.0 project, etc. Where uh, it's also um, yeah, it's intended also to understand if this is still a statement which is valid, or or we see positive evolution in uh, in the uh, let's say reduction of costs, or at least a bit more optimized uh, business case for cities with no um, trolley bus systems. Uh, do you have any experience or, or comment it's on this? Very, very good question. A very, uh, very complex one, I would say, uh, answer for that question. So in general, I would say in the majority of the use cases we, we, we had experience with, uh, I would say that still the dominating option is the, the option of cities having trolley buses, which want to extend the operation of trolley buses, uh, investing in the in motion charging uh, technology and battery trolley buses with batteries. But we have also, uh, at minimum, I know two use cases of those cities building really from the scratch the and trolley bus network. And one city is in Sweden, it's uh, Landskron, and the other city of the of the uh, of the city. Brand building brand new a uh, trolleybus network with four trolleybuses with in motion charging in city Bergen in Norway. So I would say that representatives of these cities might be the best, you know, uh, uh, experts to answer this question. Uh, if it's feasible, also from if it's economically justified to have this type of solution, these two cities are presenting yes. But I think we need to. Uh, this uh, might be the subject for another 
meeting for another webinar uh, having these representatives of the cities. Yes, but this Bergen uh, solution especially was built especially for the trolley buses from the very beginning. We we're thinking about the trolley buses with batteries. So this trolley bus network is used uh, from the beginning as a source of electricity for, for batteries, but it's it's uh, created this way to, to provide the, uh, I would say 24 seven service by these trolley buses. Perfect, thank you. Indeed, um, I uh, I had a chance to work with the city of Bergen with the with the mobility with the transport and mobility uh, department. At that time, I think it was 2010. Um, we were working on uh, how to increase yeah, sustainable mobility in the city, and they uh, they developed a light rail train system. So they were already looking to different solutions to reduce, of course, uh, um, the use of private uh, cars and provide a better public transport. Um, I see uh, Yusuf also reacts uh, yeah, with a comment saying that it is, it is a quite reliable solution uh, for uh, cities and regions with uh, yeah, difficult climate, extreme climate conditions as well. Um, I don't know if there is further reactions from, uh, from the colleagues. I believe it's very interesting, uh, these examples of these two cities, uh, Matthias. I, I was not aware myself, so thanks a lot for that. I believe it makes very much sense uh, to to try to get in touch with uh, with them and perhaps to have uh, additional information. Uh, we really strive uh, in, in the Clean, Clean Bus Europe platform project to have um, a bit more of uh, of insights into battery bus technology, um, battery trolley bus technology, uh, because um, I have the feeling is is not uh, that uh, extended. It's not that well uh, known just for the cities, as we were saying, that have deployed this uh, this technology already with a kind of a tradition uh, um, path. But um, just let us know uh, also the the colleagues in the room if you know uh, any interesting topic, any interesting use case. Um, if there is no more questions, uh, I think we are perfectly on time today. So thank you very much for, for the discussion. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Matthias, for, for your presence today, for, for guiding us through this uh, amazing, complete, extensive and in-depth presentation. Uh, for all of you, as usual, we will have the, the slides uh, being shared and, uh, and the recording will be on the website very soon. Let me see the last comment. Fantastic. Thanks, Yusuf. Uh, yes, we will be sharing a document showing the advantages of uh, emotion charging trolley bus very soon from UATP side. So yeah, we, we, we can uh, we can continue working on how to complement and provide more more information on, on this technology, which definitely is uh, in the scope of the project. So thanks a lot, Mateus. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, we continue the discussions uh, offline. Uh, We're very happy to to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure and, and more, more than happy to, you know, to continue this conversation about this technology. I see that one of the colleagues from Netherlands just mentioned that they are looking forward to this new trolley buses. Yes, indeed. There's a city of Arnhem who will shortly have a the in motion charging system, the trolley buses. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bart, also. Thank you. Have a great day to all of you. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye.